All right. In the last part of the lecture, we talked about the Thomas theorem. If men define the situation as real, they're real in their consequence. And we saw how in the Stanford prison experiment, over time, the prisoners started to define that fake prison or pretend prison as being real. And then once that happened, for all intents and purposes, that was a real prison. And so people had reactions like you would find in real prison. People had real nervous breakdowns uh, because they thought they couldn't get out of this real prison. And I don't think it's an accident that the one prisoner who tried to pretend to have a nervous breakdown but seemed to really have a nervous breakdown is now someone who's a counselor for the prison system. So the Stanford Prison Experiment is a situation which is objectively not true but gets defined as being true or real and therefore has real consequences. We can see other examples of this uh, throughout history. One example is what you're seeing here, and that is how in the past witches were burned uh, at the stake for being witches. Now I'm inclined to believe that there are no such things as witches in the sense of uh, people who have like supernatural insight into dark forces and are able to manipulate things in the world, kind of the traditional conception of witches. Uh, but nevertheless, there have been times and places where people believed in witches, and then some people were defined as being witches, even though they likely weren't. And because they were defined in that way, there were real consequences. People were executed in this very uh, horrific way. Here's another example, um, and you may have seen photos of this, but this is uh, a mass suicide that uh, occurred in what was called the Heaven's Gate cult. And this happened back in the 1990s. And the belief of this cult was that us humans are actually descendants or aliens who are put on Earth. But we're kind of trapped on Earth. But the good news, because they, they didn't think being trapped on Earth was a good thing, is that basically the mothership for their alien civilization was trailing behind Haley's Comet, and they would be able to rejoin the mothership to go back home. All they had to do was shed themselves of their earthly bodies. So what the members of this cult did, and I think there was like 20, 30, 40 of these people, is that they committed mass suicide. They were all wearing the same kind of clothes and famously those Nike, um, those Nike shoes. And then they took a combination of drugs and also did something else. And so they all killed themselves in the thought that they are going to go back to the mothership. And part of this too was that they, they also believed that once the mothership had passed Earth, the Earth was going to be destroyed. Well, since the Earth is still around and we're still here, that kind of shows that their belief was wrong, right? They had the wrong definition of the situation, but nevertheless, they believed it was real. They believed they had to escape their earthly bodies to get back to the mothership, and there were real and significant consequences that resulted. And one more, you may know that over in India, cows are seen as being sacred or divine beings. Therefore, you are obligated to treat cows with respect if you're around members of the Hindu population. But not everyone in India is Hindu and has these beliefs. And so there are people who do like to consider cows more as a food source, like we do here in the U.S., and not as a divine being. But because segments of this population define cows as being sacred, there are real consequences if you don't uh, treat cows in a sacred way or in a way that uh, aligns with what they believe or how they believe a sacred being should be treated. And we can see this in cases where people who have tried to eat cows or consume cows have been attacked, physically attacked and physically um, assaulted because members of this population 
thought that this person who was trying to consume cows or eat cows um, and sacrifice cows was doing something against uh, this divine being, the spiritual entity. And so we can think a lot about, um, even in probably our, our daily lives, there are things that we define as being real that maybe aren't actually real, but as, as soon as we define them as being real, they are real in their consequence. And this, um, the idea of the Thomas theorem is one of the most powerful uh, tools and mechanisms to explain what we see going on in the real world. And I think it's a really core concept of sociology. And what we'll see in the next part of this lecture is how the Thomas theorem allows for what Merton calls self-fulfilling prophecies.